All right, guys, we do have a very interesting, detailed breakdown on who is the best fit for the Big Ten. We've got market ratings. We've got academic rank rankings. We've got football rankings, everything. It is a super in-depth article from 538, the numbers site. It says, where should the Big Ten expand next? We crunch the numbers, and guys, we're going to go over everything who are the actual best teams for the Big Ten? And they say, let's consider a broad universe of possibilities. Pretty much every plausible expansion candidate. And you can see all the teams in the ACC, all the teams in the Pac-12, all the teams in the Big 12. Pretty much everyone except for members of the SEC is included in this study which is a very good job. No, I don't expect the Big Ten to snipe off Big 12 teams, but certainly, guys, I've said this before. Multiple other people have said this before. If Baylor was approached by the Big Ten, they would go to the Big Ten because there's just so much more money. So whether it's the Big 12, the ACC, or the Pac-12, any of those schools would jump if they could. Of course, it's very complicated with the ACC. We talked about an earlier art. We talked about an uh, an article earlier, or, or that was a podcast where ESPN wants to keep the ACC together due to their ties with the ACC network. But you can see this is the overall score of teams in terms of sports history. So. Recent football success, football history, men's basketball, and NCAA total titles, and North Car or excuse me, Notre Dame by far is number one in terms of football success, football prestige, overall sports. Uh, with Oklahoma State surprisingly coming in at number two, I don't expect the Big Ten to add them. Very interesting here, North Carolina, the dark horse. You know the school that. I said in a video a while ago, I think they're the most interesting team when it comes to realignment. Of course, all of that might be squashed if ESPN says, listen, the ACC is staying together. We don't care. They can make it happen and North Carolina wouldn't be touched. But North Carolina, I'm sure if the ACC, uh, if something happens to the ACC, North Carolina becomes a team that would be wanted. Next, we've got Oregon. So guys, there are a lot of people that hate on Oregon. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know if it's because they're the new kids on the block. They've got the Nike money. But Oregon coming in at number four, not surprising. This is football success, but still very impressive. Then you've got Stanford. Basically, all of their weight is coming from the NCAA titles. Clemson. Clemson's not joining the Big Ten. Florida State. Utah, and there's Washington, another team that we've talked about, and then you can kind of see the other teams down there. None of those teams really outside of California in consideration at this point for the Big Ten, at least not yet. There's been a little bit of talk about Georgia Tech due to the Atlanta, the Atlanta market, uh, but I don't see them joining the Big Ten, uh, at least in terms of this round of expansion. Next, we've got the overall academics and the AAU membership, which the Big Ten values so greatly. You can see it's just if you're an AAU member, you get 10 points. If you're not, you get zero points. Like Florida State has zero points. Arizona State has zero points. But the fit here is with California. The overall academics as well as Washington, North Carolina, Virginia. I've been talking about Virginia to the Big Ten. It's because of the academics. They're a great fit. Don't think it's going to happen, but I'm just saying Virginia would be a good fit. Uh, there's Arizona, who's got a really good market, by the way. And then you can see, you know, Pittsburgh, Colorado, Stanford. I'm surprised Stanford is that low. Why is, oh, because the enrollment, I guess they have a, a very small enrollment. That's why they would be that low. Uh, but overall, you guys can see. Uh, schools like California, Washington, another, the one thing, Oregon's a little bit lower on this list, but they're still on it. And then this is the overall market rating. We know how much this means in terms of the revenue, the TV ratings, the popularity, the media footprint, 
Notre Dame with a market rating of 93. Florida State comes in second. Oregon is third. So Oregon is grading out very high on a lot of these things. There's been this perception that Washington is significantly wanted more by the Big Ten than Oregon. I'm not saying that's false, but even if Washington is more wanted, it can't be by a big margin. I mean, Oregon grades out pretty well in terms of expansion candidates for the Big Ten. That makes sense considering it sounds like the Big Ten wants to balance the overall conference better. And that's why a team like Oregon from the West and Washington from the West would work. You've got a Washington coming in at 64 behind TCU, which is interesting. Uh, Miami, I don't see Miami going to the Big Ten. Uh, it's just I haven't heard any, any rumors. And I, I feel like teams like Clemson, Miami, FSU, they just don't fit in the Big Ten. Uh, at least at this point, the main rumors we're getting is the West Wing. It's the four schools from the Pac-12 plus maybe Notre Dame. That's why I'm really highlighting those schools. And the team that I would say that performs the best, that's the biggest surprise, is Oregon. Coming in at number three in terms of their market ratings overall here. Next, we've got ratings for existing and incoming Big Ten schools. You can see that this is just a total composite, their total rankings. You've got Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Wisconsin, USC behind Wisconsin, which is interesting. I'm guessing a lot of that has to do with uh, the fit. Yeah, that has to, it has to be just the fit because USC, has a, to me, has a... Wow, they only have Wisconsin down one spot in terms of market versus Southern California. That's something that I, I don't really understand. Michigan State, UCLA, and Iowa, that's not really surprising. And then they do rank it tier by tier. Who is the biggest, you know, fish out there for the Big Ten to potentially reel in in a conference expansion scenario? Obviously, tier one is Notre Dame. Uh, you know, they've got green across the board. The situation with Notre Dame, I've said it a lot. I'm not going to, you know rehash everything, but they're probably staying independent or at least staying independent until their next TV contract, which will be in 2024. Tier two, the no-brainer. So according to 538, these are teams, the Big Ten, if you know, if these teams want to come in and if they can make it happen, the Big Ten should certainly add them. And we can see Oregon and Washington both in the no-brainers category, along with North Carolina and Florida State. North Carolina and Florida State, there's, you know, way more complicated in terms of them possibly trying to get out of their grant of rights deal. But the main key here is Oregon and Washington grading out very well on this overall scale. The market, the academics, the football presti prestige. This article is saying both of these schools are no-brainers. That should tell us when the Big Ten does their research, when they look into these schools, Oregon and Washington, I've maintained, are two schools that are and will be in the Big Ten during their next round of expansion. Tier 3, how big should the Big Ten be? So this could be possibly a 24-team conference, which I don't think is going to happen. We've heard an ESPN executive come out and say we're not creating two super conferences. ESPN doesn't want that. You've got Clemson. I don't see the fit. Utah, people have talked about it. I, I still think Utah is going to the Big 12. Miami, don't see the fit. Stanford and Cal, those are the, the other two schools. Those would be mainly brought in for academic reasons, for overall program prestige. The Big Ten values that they value AAU, things like that in terms of the overall academics. So it would be Stanford and Cal coming in in Tier 3. Those other schools to me just... I would say Utah would be interested. Would be interesting. I guess you could pose the question: Would the Big Ten want Utah over a program like California? Obviously, Utah has got a way better football program, but it comes down to academics versus football, something like that. And which one? And also, I guess market. And then this is Tier Four, and it is interesting. Virginia is a great fit in the Big Ten. I'm surprised their sports are that low. I understand Virginia is definitely nothing special at football, but they've got a great basketball program under Tony Bennett, so I think they're kind of underselling them there. The market is definitely going to be low, but the one thing I would say to look at, the overall fit. For Virginia, it's a 73. The next closest would be Pittsburgh at 71, and 
Arizona at 71 as well, but all of these schools on this list, I would say very little chance they're going to be in the Big Ten expansion. You could make an argument for Colorado if the Big Ten wants every single time zone. That would bring in the mountain time zone, although I, I, I do believe Utah is also in the mountain time zone, if I have that correct. E actually, I don't know. Utah might be West time zone. I'm not sure. But Colorado certainly is the mountain time zone. I still think Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and Arizona State are going to the Big 12 un until I hear otherwise. That is the current most logical rumor, especially if you talk about the Big Ten expanding to 20 teams. Uh, the domino effect that will have will be very drastic on the Pac-12. But overall, I would say not, you know, nothing really interesting here outside of Virginia being a very good fit, which I already knew. And you can just see some other schools there like Kansas is another one. Pe there was a lot of people last year talking about Kansas to the Big Ten because they're a decent fit, I guess. But overall, Kansas football program is such a dumpster fire. I'm not sure the Big Ten would want to take that on. Also, the market is not attractive. They do have an unbelievable basketball program. Uh, um, but other than that, I don't think they would take them. And then Tier 5, let's be honest, there are better choices. Uh, really, none of these teams. I mean, Baylor does have a good market. But I would say that these teams all... You know, extremely, extremely small percent chances. The the key thing with this article, guys, that I would take away from it, we're, we're talking about, you know, Oregon maybe being undersold. And I'm not this Oregon fan at all. I've just heard a lot of people bad-mouthing Oregon. When you actually crunch the data, and this is not my data, this is 538 doing a literal deep dive on the market size, on the attractiveness of a program to a certain conference, specifically the Big Ten, you've got a team like Oregon who's on the up and up with the NIL booster stuff, getting five-star quarterbacks. They are an attractive team. So I think this idea that Oregon would bog down the Big Ten and dilute the overall TV contract is completely blown out of proportion based off of this article. Uh, you've got 538 coming out and saying, listen, this is a no-brainer. You should 100% add Oregon and Washington. And that has been kind of my theory of the West Wing, along with Stanford and Cal. Of course, Tier 1 is Notre Dame. And that's something that would happen if Notre Dame were, were going to say, listen, being an independent is good and all, but we want 40 or 50 extra million dollars per year in a TV deal. That's what Notre Dame would have to do in that scenario. And then they would join the Big Ten after their NBC contract is up in 2024. That's going to be a while. That's still multiple years away. Um, the next shoe that's going to drop, I would say, is the Big Ten making a move. Of course, we've reported that the Big Ten might want to wait for the Big 12 because they don't want to be sued um, and, and, and for like destroying the Pac-12 conference overall because... Face it, we already know they destroyed the conference with USC and UCLA. I know some people will say the you know Pac-12 commissioner destroyed the conference. That can, you can certainly make an argument for that. This conference was on the way down even before USC and UCLA left. The reason, part of the reason USC and UCLA left was due to the horrible TV contract they were going to get. And you look at what the Big Ten's going to get, and it's a no-brainer. And, and of course, you've got the Big Ten Conference now in California. What sense does that make? Well, outside of money, it makes no sense. And literally, outside of monetary gain, California, USC and UCLA joining the Big Ten literally makes no sense. It's just for money. That's what it's for. Um, and that's why the Big Ten now is like, let's try and make it make some sense by taking more teams from the West to mitigate the travel the conference is so lopsided. It's all on one coast right now or one side of the United States. So we will see what happens. But the big stuff to, to take away, Oregon and Washington are peop, you know, schools that are valued by the Big Ten, at least according to these metrics. And then, of course, the other schools, you know, Stanford and Cal is right there as well. That's more of academics. You could make an argument that Utah might be more attractive to the Big Ten, but that would require an even bigger deep dive, in my opinion, to where do you take Utah over California? Do you take Utah over Stanford? Could that be an argument you make? I've heard people talk about it before. 
Right now, it looks like the most logical situation is Utah going to the Big 12, but we will see if there was a spot for them in the Big 10. I'm sure they would take it. I don't think there is right now, but it is a conversation because they do grade out pretty well. Uh, but guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.